What up, everyone? MCI, Mixing It Up Podcast, Episode 8. We're here with DJ Jody Dro. Yo, what's up, man, bro? What's up? It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, so, thanks for coming by, man. I fuck with the show. I'm excited to be on it and be a guest. So Hell yeah. So, um, you know, the podcast is always about educating and inspiring, um, you know, bringing a network of people together, building my network, you know, trying to bring people on the podcast that have had influence in the scene, you know. Um, so it would basically be insulting if I didn't have you on because <laughs> you've done so much and you've it's been a part turn. of the scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, we um, had some fun for sure. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about. And um, so what's up with you, man? Everything good? Uh, yeah, I'm good, man. I, I'm DJing and dad, and, and that's like the that's the routine. Nice. You know, get down on the weekend. Dope. So, uh, you know, you've done a lot of crazy shit, a lot of cool shit. You've sold out the Fronthal. You've done a lot of networking. You're at all the big shows I see around. You got tickets. You got the inside scoop at venues. Absolutely. You know, all the venues the artists want to be at. So I'm going to ask you about that. But before we get into all that and speak on that, Tell me how you got started, man. Give me a little backstory so people I was actually, may not know. And... I knew you would ask me this question. So, like, when I was leaving home, I was thinking about it, actually, on my drive here. And I was like, what made me love music? You know, what, what was the thing? And I always, like, loved movies with music in it and shit like that when I was younger. So I can think back to, like, my favorite movie as a kid being The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston. And I just, I don't know why. There's there's no good excuse. I just love music. Um we, me and my sister used to jug credit cards and, you know, those papers they would send you in the mail or you could get them in, like, some newspapers where you could order, like, 15 CDs. Oh, yeah, like the BMI or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we yeah, would yeah. jug, like, credit cards and get 15 CDs and we would just disc trade. Like, we would get – every Christmas, for some reason, I felt like we got a damn boom box, each of us. And we would – you know, we had a CD collection. I remember – you know, my first memory of like loving hip hop was when DMX dropped uh, "Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood." Mm -hmm. We used to wrestle in the backyard, and that was like all our entrance music was something off that <laughs> album. <laughs> so yeah, like I just I've always been a music kind of sore. I kind of remember my first local hip hop memory is uh, North Star. Okay, some yeah, real familiar. like if yeah. it, you know if you know yeah. about that, you're really deep into it. I remember going to Believe in Music on Henry and oh yeah. Getting the album, you know, when it when I was probably not even old enough to be buying it, but I always just been entrenched in music. Um, one time riding down the street with my friend, I was like, "Hey, bro, I think I can rap." He was like, "Well, spit that shit then." Long story short, we had a friend who was doing music. He had like a home studio. I I got in touch with him. I was like, "Hey, bro, I think I want to, you know, put a verse on something or like let me rap on something. I think I can rap." Right. He gave me the run around, like, oh, I can't do it, whatever. Uh, you know, something happened. He went away. I had went to, you know, other friends helped me start, you know, showing me what to do. I recorded a couple songs with some other friends. I felt like I was dope, even though I wasn't at the time. You know how it goes. Really? Like, oh, at yeah. the time, Starting it was dope. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> went to Best Buy. I got my own mic, just kind of started teaching myself things and music and I, I had my space at the time my, we would drop a song like a right fast along pape came with me and we would drop a song like every day we would link up every day he got out of school we would always record one song and try to drop one song not the greatest songs every time you know but uh right. they they would do good numbers on my space just because we were popular guys kind of you know amongst the community people fucked with us so no matter what it sounded like you know, listening back to it at the time, it was the wave. Right. And uh, we was like, on that, we was on that little rise. We came came across APOC. There were some older guys getting radio play. Yeah. Um, Tony they was, yeah, yeah, good dude. Yep. They was like, hey, man, you need to come rock with us. You know, you're Mexican. We're Mexican. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the right. automatic connection. Uh, <clears throat> so we always had the home studio. Then we started recording with them, Ricky. Uh, those guys helped us out a ton. They taught us about, you know, some of the business aspects, things that we were, we had to learn from somebody else. Yeah. And uh, you know, they liked the way we moved too, because we was already on things like that. We was trying to trying to put together press kits and 
they had a release party. We dropped a CD the same day, like as their release party. It was we did the show together. It was real dope. It was our first show. It's actually coming up on our um, ten year anniversary. I, I keep joking with Pape, like we should do something for it, you know, because it's about to be in August. But yeah, the, the, then it just kind of kept growing. We had the buzzing song on the radio with APOC. Um, then the shows started coming, the party in the park and rock the rappers. Those came sim simply because of the, the radio play. Yeah. Um, and then I tapped into like the intersection network later on into it when we were deep enough and I was comfortable enough to like, Hey, I think we can start doing a little more. And we had a nice catalog. So I met, met up with Mike G. I kind of pestered him and pestered him and pestered him for a while. Like, Hey man, we need to get together or whatever probably got a million rappers in his inbox. So yeah. I, I was just like, fuck it. I bought tickets to the shows that he was throwing. I bump into him at the bar. Yo, what's up, Mike? It's Jody, you know, introduced myself a few times. Yeah. Finally, was at a Yo Gotti show. I was like, hey, man, you know, nobody in Muskegon knows about these concerts because it's not touching the network over there. Let me, you know, let me help you out. Sell some, some tickets and shit. I don't even want much in return. You can guest list us or whatever. We gonna come anyway. But I feel like there's a missing opportunity over there. He liked the idea. We we chopped it up later, and uh, that that built that network with the intersection and kind of with the Live Nation. Uh, whenever we get those looks, and then we go on to like the Frontal and the local local shit where we was getting all the media attention and all that. Right. That just yeah. came from that just came from a like a just I had quit my job. I was like I'm finna go hard with this shit. The day after I quit my job, I went to the watermark. I was like, hey, I got this idea. I, when I seen y'all building this building, I wanted to do a show here. It's just been my kind of my goal. I want to drop this CD that we got. They loved it. They put together the press press release for us. That's how we got the artist spotlight in the Chronicle. We did good there. We got a we got a follow up show. All the while we was working gigs in Grand Rapids, Traverse City, everywhere we could show trade. We even went to Des Moines, Iowa, on nice. a show trade. Yep. You know, and it was like. <clears throat> We got ganked around over there. The dude was supposed to cover our uh, hotel and shit. He spun us. He didn't cover it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> never, man. never them learning experiences, but, yeah, that, I think that happens. To I wanted to kill musicians. him. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's still, I used to my friend on Facebook. Fuck it. We had fun. We had fun, and we seen something different, yeah. and I got to travel, you know, across the country with my bros and do something we love to do. Um, And then we kind of... We did the front though. We sold that out a couple times. Where a lot of the popularity came from was the parties and shit. We would do some. Uh, I thought it was for networking and promoting. That's that was my whole goal behind it. Like, people pay attention to what we do already. We could throw these parties and. The first time we did it was like overwhelming. We didn't think it would be like we thought it was gonna be 150 people at a party in the woods. Right. We did the glow one and that bitch had probably seven or eight hundred people fall through it throughout the night and it went down with no like drama nobody nobody got hurt nobody got into a fight nothing right. crazy had no overdoses nothing like that <laughs> and then from there everybody was like man shit i think the glow kind of outgrew the popularity of the group the party oh, itself yeah. you know it's yeah. like because people was asking for it and it was begging for it we did a couple more of those man and that was the second and third one and the, one of them ended with me in handcuffs the other one ended in a uh, you know, the police came again. The, the, just the brand of yeah. the glow outgrew. They know. Yeah, they knew. Yeah. They they was and going then, to my gigs and yeah. like leaving business cards and shit, just fucking up my my real business. Yeah. So for all the fun that we had, you know, they got us on the news and all that. And we and we tried to turn it in our favor, and I felt like we did for the most part. You can insert that clip right here if you want. All right. Five seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Once I felt like the HDOE light kind of be, you know, dimming down or I was kind of washed with the idea. Like we did it for so long and we was trying. And I really, at one point, like I said, I would put it on like every day I would be Jody Dro. I would go to the grocery store. I would put my outfit on. You know what I'm right, saying? It's just, yeah. it was it was me. Nowadays, I'll go sweats and a t-shirt. Right. You know, it's a yeah, totally yeah. different story. Yeah. But um, I really thought at one point, like we was going to make it somehow. Some, like we was going to be, yeah. you know, on. And that's, how, that's what I was trying to portray, and other people thought that because we thought that, you know? And I, I kind of feel like that's something that's lacking right now. Yeah. Like, there's no real, like, there's nobody just, like, you can look at their shit and be like, what they got coming up? Because you know something's coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, we always, and to this day, like, I, I got something going on. 
I'm booked somewhere, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, and I, I kind of always kept that same network that I built up because uh, I always tried to make sure I had like a good name. I didn't want nobody to, I never did no bad business to right. nobody. So all that network that I had built up when we were doing the rap act carried over when I was doing the DJ act. It was still all in the same lane. Like I'm I'm still getting booked at the, for the Live Nation joints. I did the yeah. baby tour. I did yeah. Moneybag Yo. And that's all after we were rap done yeah. rapping. So, well, I was. But, yeah. uh, so I, I just want to back up real quick because I thought that was a, a important part that you said that people could take from when you were like in Mike G's inbox but realized that fucking he probably had a bunch of rappers and shit in his inbox you oh, know yeah. what I mean to get get at him so you played it smart and was like I need to get where this guy's at and then yeah I, yeah I, and I, was... I need to build a relationship with him and then you provided him some value so I think that whole thing is very important because that's what successful people do you're just like fuck it let me help you get more Ticket sold yeah. and shit and then, through my network, and it helps him out. Then he sees your value, and then that's how you get in the network. And the people. crazy that's thing dope, is, bro. like, the cra at this point, he's like my brother. You know what I'm saying? We're right. friends. Yeah. It's not even mm -hmm. about, you know, what he can do for me or what I can do for him. Right. It, yeah. it never was intended to be that way. Right. But I definitely was, I knew that I wanted to be fucking with him because of the things he was bringing to West Michigan mm -hmm. at the time. There was, at the time, there was no Twenty Monroe. There was no competition. Everything that came, I, he should get a lot more credit for them. Be, there being alternative venues and shit like that, because there wasn't nobody else booking no hip hop tours. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I chased him down. I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to fuck with him, and I knew that he was good. You know, I I had some mutual friends. I knew it was good company. Right. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. a matter of how can I get this guy to know that I'm not just. You know, yeah, of course I want to perform at these shows, but I'm not finna, and I never paid to play anywhere. So, like, if, if that's something that you guys are into doing, please don't do that. It's, <laughs> you fuck up yeah. the game when you do that. Yeah. You make it hard on people who's really, really should get the opportunity just off their network and their grind and, and what, they're, what they're putting out. But, uh, yeah, so I, I definitely want to be a part of that atmosphere. And to this day, like... I mean, big shout out to everybody at the intersection. I don't pay to go there, you know, yeah, and I don't abuse it either. I'm right. not walking yeah, in yeah. with twelve people. It's just right. they take good care of me. They look out for me, and I still got tickets to some shows. Yeah, that's dope. So, all right, that's that's cool, man. You filled in a lot of good blanks, and I got a lot of out of that. So, let's talk about what we're doing, what you're doing right now. We you talk vaguely about transitioning into the DJ and things. So, basically, the HDO. Th HDOE thing, you're saying that kind of dimmed down, died yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I kind of felt like rapping, you were kind of wasn't in love with it anymore, type thing. It Is wasn't that really that. Or? It was when I started to DJ, I was like, oh yeah, this might be that alternative for me. You know, mm -hmm. like it's like I tell, I was telling you off camera. I always had the most fun when we did the show. Mm -hmm. Like everything right. leading up to the show. The stress of the show, the stress of making the music and, yeah. you know, trying to be perfect. I have some of my best music that never came out on my computer. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm such right. a... I've performed songs that never came out because I love the way they sound live more than when I laid it. Like, right. I couldn't get that vibe. Yeah. So, like, I knew that when I started DJing, I was like, this might be the alternative for me just because I love to perform so much. I felt like... It eliminated all the hard work, and it kind of was just like the instant gratification that I was okay. looking for. Yeah. All right, so uh, now that you're DJing, I see you're always at the events, and I know that's part of uh, what you were talking about with your network and being able to have the tickets for the inside of uh, the I meant to say this, too. I don't mean yeah. to cut you off. I meant no, to say this when no we were worries. talking about the Mike G thing. Like, I feel like if you're a local rapper... And you ain't at the shows watching the people. It's the pros and the amateurs. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't going to check out the pros, like, you don't know how to perform. You don't know really how to make a set. Yeah. You need to learn, you know, what works. You need to study is right. the main thing. Yeah. And it's that's something I always pride on my to this day I do it. I got I just I got tickets to shows coming up right now that I'm attending and I got tickets that I might not attend. But yeah. I say that to say that. I always want to hear the DJs. Like I have things that I've taken from other DJs that I 
yeah, I heard this on the Drake tour. The dude who went out before Drake was rocking, and he did this between these two songs, and I liked it. So now I'm gonna try my hand at yeah, it and yeah. get you know get it's influence. Just, yeah, yeah, it's important to be a student for sure. Always. Exactly, and yeah. I felt like that was another one of the things that we always offered when we was doing the rap act was that our live show was dope. We we didn't ever use back vocals, only on hooks. Yeah, uh, you know every that's, that's every, awesome. Yeah, and it was like I feel like we were better live than we were on the mix because once you do something so much, you know exactly how it's supposed to go. When yep. you first record something, I'll ad lib my own song. You get what I'm saying? Like right. after I hear yeah, it yeah, and yeah. it's for sure. out for six months, I'll be like, oh, I should have said this right there. Yeah. You know, and, it, <laughs> and it's just like, you can, when you're live and you don't have the back vocal, you can do that. Mm -hmm. and, and the greats do it. Like yeah. Kanye, he doesn't, you know, certain people. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, they change the lyrics. You, know, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You can make it, you know, region specific or where you're at, city yeah. specific. You yeah, get, for sure. If you use back vocals, you always handicap yourself. So right. if you're a rapper and you ain't going to the tours and you check, I mean, don't go to everything if you don't if you ain't got the means or you don't have a network, but right. go to some things and just check it out and kind of see. For one, you need to see what type of people go to concerts. Yeah. Because you never, it's not what you expect. Right. It's never what you expect. You need to see who's consuming what. And those and, are the people that you need to figure out how to sell to when absolutely. you, you want to get on stage or absolutely you because sell your record. So you need to be by those people and build relationships with those people as well. Absolutely. You know? And and it's it's always, you know, you you never know what you're going to learn. Right. Just you got to experience things. So you definitely need to be at the concerts checking out the pros. Okay. So... Um, as we're talking about uh, the network, and then you got the tickets or whatever, uh, tell me a little bit about the DJ, and then how that how they're breaking uh, records in the club for artists too. Like, what is the importance of that? Because um, you know, uh, Los the King, yeah, yeah. So he was on here, and he was talking about uh, artists that want to get their singles out there and shit, and and he even mentioned your name, like, hey, try to get it to the DJs and see if it's popping. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, absolutely. So what What is your take on that, bro? And uh, where do you come I, in with that? And how do you see that? I now? pride myself so. on playing local music. Thanks. For, I have three qualifications. It has to It has to be of quality. Okay, that's the first one. That's the most important. Understandable. I can't be going from here to here on right. my level. Yeah, you know what I'm saying when yeah. I'm transitioning. It has to be a quality. It has to be a slap. Like it, it has to be undeniable. I, I, it's, it's not on. It's not. It's different than me playing a Kodak Black song that's eh. You know what I'm saying? If right. I'm playing a local song that's eh, they're not gonna be. Is there's gonna be no recognition to it at all? Right. So it has to have a nice bounce to it. Something that something that makes it work that consumes people. I have and I have local songs that I play quite often, especially the best part about it is like if I see the artist in the club, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I can drop yeah. his record yeah, and dope. give him that feel and give him that gauge to where he, I didn't have no we didn't have DJs or kind of clubs like I mean there's a couple of us now who will play some local music. We didn't right. really have that. Yeah. We I mean we did have certain outlets that aren't available now. But right, yeah, yeah. And just the way the game is yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally different. different. Yeah. And uh, so it's got to be a slap. It's got to be a quality, and it's got to be something that's brought to me. I'm not interested in going on Chillis Channel and downloading your right. your track, yeah, and yeah. then I got make the, it easy for you to get to like an MP3 where you can literally. Oh listen yeah, to and it, you and should have it if you're really serious about it. Like you should have. I'm not interested in playing no novice or no no hobbyist. I can kind of ju judge as well. Yeah. I'm passing that judgment by right. the way. Like. And I'm judging you guys on things that probably shouldn't even be judged on. Like, you got to look the part. I don't want to be, you know, you can't be rapping about being fly and be bummy. It's right. just, yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's yeah, a yeah. package deal. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's my responsibility to help somebody come out of here eventually. And I'm not trying to put nobody out there that's going to make us look bad. Yeah, We got to have a good representation of where we're from. And so it's important that, you, that, you, that you're really a rapper. I'm not going to play... No hobbyist shit. So. Right, yeah. Or somebody that hasn't built any name for themselves yeah, yeah. already. It should be something that somebody's up, so. almost asking me to play. Right. You know, and, and, it, and it happens. Not so. the artist, somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, like, no. Hey, this your shit should, be, your shit. should yeah. be something people are asking me. I should have to say either I don't have that because they haven't given me that or where can I find that at? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I should have it because you sent it to me and you was on your shit. Yeah. And you was on the right business. 
All right, so we're talking about the DJ thing, and you just just something that like people bring to you. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like, on their shit basically. It's, it's got to be an undeniable yeah. record. It's got to be able to be inserted in between some Meek Mill and Beyonce, undeniable, un, like un unnoticeable with that quality. Um, and I and I play it if it's a bop and it, and the shit works. I play it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Definitely support, but. Right. I do want to see the artist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. going to just run your record dry in the club if you're not there. If you're not coming out, popping out once in a while, you know, I'll give you, I'll let you get that gauge and sh we can see together. That's the main thing. Like, you know, that's another big thing to me too. Like when we used to put the event together and do the shows, everybody would want to open up. But if they didn't perform, they didn't show up to the show. Like, and support it or like watch it and be study part it. of the community be, that's, and that's the yeah, thing the network, yeah, be, yeah. Uh, it's it's a, it's a two-way street yeah and i i don't got nothing to lose by not playing anybody's record i can play drake all night right you yeah know, and and not lose and you know people love that already and it, yeah anyway, yeah shit, that's you know? and <laughs> so it's a lot i don't take tips i just don't but i've had people offer me money to play their music and I won't. But then again, I've had somebody give me a fifty dollar bill and ask me to play a Drake song. It's the easiest fifty dollars I ever got in my life. Right. I yeah. mean, as much as I want, I, I did say no, thank you. But he insisted. But I say that to say that, like, if somebody's willing to pay me fifty bucks to play a Drake song that's I can't miss, a slap, I can find twenty of them right now in my, you know, in my right. song catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have to. Ha I'm not interested in paying playing it for money. It just has to be about, has to be quality. And you got to be on your shit. Makes sense. Yeah. So uh, at this point in the podcast, I kind of like to, you know, we see that networking is definitely a strong suit for you. You yep, know, and you kind of have um, done everything. And that's why I say, man, I have been inspired by you. That's love. Luckily, I got to meet you today, finally yeah. in person. By but, the way, we know. feel like we—I I feel like I've known you for right. a lot longer just because of the, like I said, social media make yeah. you feel like you know somebody. We be on, you know, you be on things, I be on. So yeah, and we and we it's a mutual comment on each other. Yeah, shit, hell yeah, you know, yeah. It's, and it's, all that. So yeah, but uh, so I appreciate you coming through. But um, what advice could you give, or what are some mistakes that you've made, and maybe could help some of these guys that want to get their records played in the clubs, or or want to get their music streamed, or you know maybe just coming up and don't understand the logistics of it? What what would you say, bro? Like, uh, so I mean, I get this question a lot from people too, and I'm always all ears. Like, you know, everybody right. has their own scenario. Right. Uh, for the most part, if you're an artist, you're just trying to you're trying to pop out and impress somebody. Have your shit on streaming services. That's the way of the world now. You know, you 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 can upload it to YouTube, but you're only gonna reach so far. Mm -hmm. So and that's and that's what we have a problem with here specifically, is everybody thinks they can just throw that shit on Chilla's channel. Much respect to Chilla, and and, it, and that's where it goes. Right. But there's many yeah. other places to distribute your music. Yeah. Nine They're not times just out of ten, sharing it on Facebook. Yeah. That one kills me too, man. Because nine times out of ten, promo. somebody's using title. Apple Music and all that. So get you a tune core and, and and study the game. You can you can make a lot of money off your own music on tune core. Uh and it's easy to do. Anybody can do it. Russ still owns his tune core catalog. Mm -hmm. He's in a deal, but his deal is specific to him owning that tune core catalog. So many of those songs went gold platinum. And on, uh, he's getting plaques every every day for the shit, but he owns that part. That's yeah. his that's his yeah. catalog. Get you, make sure you own your shit. I know it's easy as hell to do a YouTube beat, lease it at least. Um, what else is important? Make sure, like I said, make sure you're putting the putting the putting the energy out there that you want to receive. You know, dress the way you want people to. You know, it's a character you're playing. Mm -hmm. I don't think nobody's really rapping about 100% exactly what they're doing. And if you if you are, then be careful. Um, but you know when you're playing that character, make sure you're playing it, right? You know, in yeah, yeah. In, in the eyes of public. So take your shit seriously. Have cover art. You know everything you need to distribute your music properly. Copy what you see being done in the industry. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it because yep. then you'll look like you're the real deal. Yep. Um, make sure you're getting that music out to the right people. Myself, other DJs, 
uh, local radio, even though, you know, people may not listen to the radio, it don't matter. It still feels good when your radio song gets played on the radio. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something you can say you've done. A right. ton of these shows that I've done are just all pretty things for my EPK. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could oh, can go DJ for Waka Flocka again. It would be the fifth time or sixth time or whatever. But uh, he he's only gonna be on my EPK one time. You know what right, I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. so I say that to say that if I never see Waka Flocka again, that'll be cool because I got that on my EPK. Right, yeah. A lot of that shit is to make you look good and you know, don't pay to perform at no shows. If you if you're looking to spend some money to perform, put yourself together a gig, you know, at a local venue, invest the money that way so you can see some return or at least you're not getting ganked. Because 15 minutes on a you know show with 12 other openers with yeah. the headliner, you know. If it's, it's 15 minutes. If it's that, you know, well, that's generous. Like, I got six minutes. Like, what the fuck you gonna, how you gonna That's extremely generous. Yeah, minutes. yeah. <laughs> 15 is a lot. For, and it's a lot for some of you guys. Make sure you, make sure you learn how to perform, man. That's important. Like I said, go study the game. Go study what other people do. Watch performances on YouTube. Learn about the music industry, music business, who's managing who, who, do, who the touring, touring agents are. Shit like that is important to know because you never know when you walk in a room. You, you know, the rapper might be over here, but the most important people could be over here. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to take a picture with the baby, but I want to talk to who the fuck's handling them. Right. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. It that just makes, makes sense. It makes more sense to be... They're more accessible, too. Cause, Absolutely. Cause, I, as many yeah. as many national shows I've done, I've, I've smoked a blunt with 21 Savage like and his people... I never, I've never been the one to be like, hey, bro, can I, I took a picture with one rapper, and it was just like, I got a meet and greet as a gift, so I'll take this picture with Jeezy. But I've ne like, ne I didn't ask the baby or Money Bag. So I, I was on Money Bag Yo's live on his Instagram, like he was on stage talking to me, and I was just like, I could have easily been like, hey, bro, can I take a selfie? I mean, those are good, good to look at, you know, or whatever. Right. But yeah. like I said, the most important people in the room, ten. 10 times out of 10 isn't that artist. I mean, yeah. he's the he's the money grab, yeah. but the money's somewhere else. Yeah. You're so right. I say that to yep. say, man, just just study the game, network, meet people you're supposed to meet, you take it serious, get around the people that are serious in your community, wherever it may be. If you're from Muskegon, you know, make sure you're tapping into Grand Rapids. Why wouldn't you tap into the second largest city that's 30 minutes away? I got gigs in Grand Rapids coming up. It's right. important to be over there because yeah. if... I got a feeling that it might be there. I know people over there are getting getting plaques now. Right, like AGO is doing yeah. great. They're from Grand Rapids, um, so it goes to it goes to your region. Find the people moving and shaking, and and you know try to become one of those people. And that's that's one thing that I say too is like what's weird, uh, you know, run a Facebook ad in your area and start getting your music out to the people of maybe the regions of shows you want to play so they're getting exposed to your Absolutely. music. So then when you want to sell tickets and you've already been to those shows and made those connections, it's so much easier to sell tickets Facts. in that area because then they've seen your music. But people don't really think like that. They just, you know, think they can go play a show on the other side of the state and sell tickets. And Here's shit, another know? thing to that. To to you got to have a nice support support team behind yeah. you. You got to have some people who believe in you. I mean, right. If your best friends don't believe in you, you might be doing the wrong thing. They just probably being nice and not telling you that you're trash. Yeah. We used to we used to mob the shows. We would get as many carfuls of people as we could. Shit, who ain't got ten dollars? We got ten dollars. Come on. Right. You know, you you gonna be drinking and smoking, we're good. Yeah. Um, and we I remember one time we showed up to the Highland Park Theater uh for a show with Days. Big shout out to Days. And uh when we got there, it was us, and then there was like 20 or 30 people in the crowd wearing HDOE t-shirts. Oh, dope. So to the people who weren't there for us, they were like, damn, these dudes must be dope. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or or they at least had to think about what we were going to do. They were like, I wonder what these, you know. Yeah. Or they were like, damn, that's a lot of people. It, there was some thought to the to the congregation going on right. from the people that weren't with us. The people yeah. that were with us was like, I just can't wait to see my guys. You know? Right, yeah. But when we went on, you could tell that in the room too. Like it was a different, we had the energy there because we had our our people immediately in front of us. By, mm. and, and you don't need your friends on stage behind you. You need them in on off the stage in front of you so you can draw that energy back. 
I get it. Your man wants to be a rapper too. But if he's not a rapper, have him in the crowd, man. You don't need 20 people on stage. That always kills the performance. Yeah. So, like, make sure you got your people with you. That's another thing. I've known people, like, a lot of popping artists go to South By with a gang of people. Yeah. And that's how they get bigger. Yeah. You know, it's like, yep. it's, it grabs attention right away. You'll notice 30 people coming before you notice two. Mm. No matter what the problem is, yeah. what what is going on. But I will say this too: is uh, you got to start with them two guys, and then you got to be in oh, fact yeah. just enough to get them thirty. But a lot of people want to jump to that, like trying to get a thousand fans shit. But you got yeah, nah. two fans. You, you got to have saying? some quality, <laughs> quality <laughs> you gotta, support you gotta, behind you. Up. Some people yeah. that really believe in you. Some people that you that you know are there because you know not what you have to give them, but what they can give you. Right. That makes sense. So, all right, dope man. Appreciate that. Um, so let's, uh, let's see, we're getting to about 33 minutes. So let's, what's next for you, man? What's 2020 beyond? What's your aspirations? Oh, where man. are you going? What's your music journey, man? I'm, I'm going to keep spinning, man. I'm going to keep DJing. I'm enjoying some of the gigs I've been picking up lately. I got some dope, uh, residencies that happen like on a monthly or a bi-monthly basis that are really taking good care of me. Those are fun. Um, like some of them are a little non-traditional ones, MMA, which is super dope. I get to go watch some fights, you know, nice, and dope. have some fun. And I've seen I've seen your social post about yeah, that. Yeah, too. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you about yeah. that too. So that one's dope. that one's pretty fun and it's yeah. dope. Big shout out to Lights Out. They take great care of me. Um, I, I've been getting Billy's quite often. It's been on a nice. monthly for the past few times, and that's one of my favorite spots to gig at. So if you ever get a chance to see me DJ anywhere, make it be at Billy's because. It's just a different type of vibe there, and it's my favorite spot right now. Dope. I'm, I'm hoping to get a couple more. It's always fun to do the section, so I try to do that at least once or twice a year with something. So, I, and I'm sure I'm, I got one coming up sooner or later. All right, dope. Um, one thing I don't want to backtrack because uh, I do want to wrap this up shortly, but uh, I know. I know maybe the DJ and thing came naturally, but I know there's some kind of learning curve because I know I know you record in HDO oh, and yeah. all that, so I'm su sure some of those skills transferred. But I want to hear a little bit about your transition to that DJ and like how long it took and some maybe some frustration okay. you had. Cause, yeah, so because I think that's a real important part of the journey. You know what I'm saying? So so when we used to perf when we used to do shows, I um I have virtual DJ home. I would I would sit there at home and it sometimes take me five six seven eight ten tries but i would literally live record the set so like i'd have the instrumental for this song drop it horns 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 oh yeah yeah, yeah. or whatever yeah, fade yeah, it yeah. out you get what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. but so you're already yeah so i had so i'm coming with 20 minutes you give me 20 minutes, I'm coming with 20 minutes. Right. I'm not going to, we're not going to be, oh, you got to hurry up and wrap it up. I'll yeah. get you my 20 minutes. Right. So, uh, you know, and I would even space, even think to space it out. Like, how y'all doing tonight? You know, where I could have time to engage and yep. make it seem like we had a DJ, DJ in our set, but right. I would really just DJ and pre-record it. Okay. So I, I kind of taught myself how to like, so we would have like small gatherings at the studio or whatever. I would fuck with the DJ app playing industry music, but just from the computer. And then when I, I got the Rackets gig is what really turned me on to DJ. We had a party there. We had a we did the front though. We had the after party at Rackets. They thought they thought it was dope, I guess. Ran into one of their bartenders in the mall on like Halloween or something. She was like, hey, we just fired the DJ. You should come and talk to Ron. I was like, I'm not a DJ. But I thought about uh, it. I was like, oh, okay. I can DJ, though. I can. Right. Like, I feel like I can do it. <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, I was like, hey, man, I think I, can, I think I might be able to, you know, they just had a laptop guy before me. So right. I was like, I think I could do that. And my shit will be doper. So I started out a laptop guy, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I can no. do the same shit yeah. as I can on my controller on the laptop. Right. So if you're starting out DJing and you just got a laptop, don't get discouraged. Keep going. And then you I got, got a baby. Just start. Yeah, Don't yeah. Worry about just start. The just, just, just practice. Just YouTube. Start. Yep, exactly, bro. So, um, I just would when I when I was a laptop guy, I just would practice on that bitch, and I got to the point where I felt like I I was hanging with the people with controllers, but it didn't seem like I was taking it serious because I was just a laptop guy. Right. 
So I got a baby controller. I kind of taught myself all the ways it worked because I knew the buttons on the laptop. I just mm -hmm. didn't know where they were on the, on the controller okay, but and how to make it work. So, I mean, I still got a long way to go. I'm on my second controller. It's kind of more of a pro-am, but uh, I'm nowhere near like Tobes or none of those right, guys. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I got you. I can hang with them. Right, we right, we can get right. on the same stage in the yeah. same bar and have a good ass night. And yeah. and I got my own style and they and they give me compliments all the time. So it, it seems like it works out for me. It was tough though the transition. I still fuck up once in a while, you know, right. like hey, and I accidentally I mean, pushed all, the wrong yeah. cue or something. You're human, bro. I mean, and, you know. And, but for the most part, man, I'm very satisfied on where we came, nice. where I came. On the DJ tip, I get a lot of respect. Like I told you, man, I feel yeah. like they they love me more now than they did when we was doing the doing the rap act, and they they love me a lot then. So, dope, sweet. So, all right, man. Um, is there anything that you want to promote? Anything you want to say, man? I'd like you to drop your social media if you yeah, want people to I follow. Gotta, if you, you know, whatever. I don't have much to promote, bro. Just I'm I'm just I'm booking myself up and yeah. staying busy. So. If you see me on a flyer and you want to check me out, feel free to come check me out. It'll be, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you have a good time. Um, all my social medias are Jody Dro, J O D I D R O. He'll have okay. it on the font. Yep. Uh, you can find me if you need a DJ wedding or anything like that. You know, I'm very picky on the weddings I take, but I rock them. So, if if you if you fit the the criteria that I that I'm looking for, I, I'll I'll do it. And uh, yeah. I'm the people's DJ. That's all. all. Right. I don't all know, right, bro. Dope, man. All right. So we'll end on that note. I appreciate you coming through, man, and uh, speaking with us. And uh, I'm sure, hopefully, one day we'll sit down and wax it up again. Because there's Absolutely, a lot of other shit we could always wax. Yeah. About, oh man, but... this was this was just like a outline. Yeah, it's just a little sample. But there's you chapters. Know, there's so yeah, many chapters yeah. in the book. But I definitely would love to have you back on, man. So no uh, doubt, man. Uh, with that, I appreciate. We appreciate Jody what you do. Yeah, you know, thanks, for. Man. For the game, that. you know, um, cause I even though even though I've came and went in the local hip hop scene, I know how tough of a grind it is. I know somebody out there probably wanted just as much as I did, so they need people like you, you know, and, and me. But you going you gonna service them a lot more than I will. Right. So keep doing what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that, man. That's love. So uh, if you guys want to check out the other podcast, they'll be up on the screen. The last two that I did. And uh, make sure you check out Jody Dro at uh, any of the spots that he's DJing at. Make sure you wax it up with him because uh, he's a cool dude and uh, you can learn a lot from him like I did today. So appreciate you guys. Much love and uh, talk to you later. Peace. Later.